Hello, Blake Rudis here with another On One Workflow tutorial, and I'm really excited to show you how to work on this image in On One Photo Raw. I mean, it's just getting better and better. They're doing a lot of really great work there. So I've got a no frills notes that you can download. It's no frills because literally it's a white piece of paper with my screenshots that I'm using as you're working along with me on this image. But those are available for you to download. And in there, there's a link that says download the follow along image. And that is this image here. Now I'm not going to waste any time by going into browse because I've got a lot of really great stuff to show you. So I've just opened this image up right in develop. If you need to pause this video so that you can get yourself squared away and open this image up in develop. So the first thing I want to do is reduce the amount of spots on my image. Now, uh, my sensor was clean before I went there and then I changed my lenses. And when you change lenses on the scene, it's not always the best idea because you end up getting dust in your sensor. And if you have a mirrorless camera, there is no mirror in there to block that dust from hitting your sensor. All that dust just goes right onto your sensor and it's a nightmare. So regardless of how careful you are because i'm very careful when i change my lenses there are many variables that can happen with dust but luckily in on one photo raw we have a really easy way to fix dust spots with the retouch brush so what i'm going to do is i'm going to come over here to structure i'm going to bring the structure all the way up to 100 and you can really start to see these dust spots come out now i'm going to bring that haze down to negative 100. so this is really i'm not doing this to edit my image because it looks like really bad okay uh, but what we're going to do here is use this as our base to see all of our dust spots because here's the cool part i was talking to dan about these uh, dust spots at on one during the live event in november and dan informed me that the dust actually happens on the lowest level of the raw file so it's not like a clone stamp tool in photoshop if we start cleaning up this dust here i basically just clicked on the, the retouch brush if we just start clicking on these dust spots here and then change our structure and our haze back up to a zero like they should be now these dust spots will change accordingly they won't have any of these recorded settings from the haze or the structure okay so if you're wondering if when you fix this is it going to be a horrible clone stamp no it's not so if you need to adjust your brush size you can use the right bracket key or the left bracket key and that will help you adjust your brush size as you go through based on the size of the dust spot that you have on your image Okay, and then just go through here. I'm just going through here rather quickly just to show you. I not, might not get every dust spot, but that's okay. You can be a little bit more tedious with your dust correction behavior here. And then just, boom, do that guy. Just click and drag on that whole thing. So now I can reset that structure to zero, and I can reset the haze to zero. And you'll notice that our dust spots don't keep that remembered setting for the structure and the haze because it's happening on the lowest level of our image and it's always the best to do that first to get rid of all that stuff first just get it out of the way so you don't see it however the beauty of working in on one photo raw is that at any time you can go into the retouch brush and you can retouch any of those things as you go through so the next thing i'm going to do is just get my my image to look better i mean this is if we look at this image it's not too dark it's not too light it's actually the perfect raw file for something like this because we can actually expand the dynamic range in it quite a bit so the first thing I'm going to do is just look at the exposure here. Just bring that up a little bit in the exposure. See what we get on by bumping that up. And I think I like that at about one more stop brighter. Okay, so we'll go to a whole stop brighter on there. I'm not going to adjust the contrast yet. I usually do that after I do my highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks. So with my highlights, I'm going to go and bring those down so I can get more out of the clouds in the background. And I'm going to bring my shadows up to get more information out of the foreground. And I do this a lot of times. It's kind of like an HDR technique. But the thing here is we're going to close some of this stuff down when we go into the effects and we start working on our effects in our image. So I know I'm expanding the dynamic range quite a bit, but that's okay because we're actually going to bring some of that information back into our highlights and our shadows by doing some stuff in our effects phase. So I'm going to bring up the, the whites just a little bit there and then look at my blacks here. Maybe, maybe bring those up just a slight bit maybe to about the six point there. And then let's go up here, my whites to about nine, okay? I'm really just kind of seeing what my eye likes in this photograph. Now, one of the things that happens here when we bring our whites, blacks, shadows, and highlights up is that we lose the contrast in the image. That's why I come back here and I bring that contrast back up a little bit. So that con bring, by bringing that contrast back up a little bit, it's kind of like a cor correction tool for me. So if I took my highlights and my shadows a little bit too far and reduced the contrast a little bit too much, bumping up that contrast is going to help me out quite a bit. 
Now we have the structure and the haze. I'm going to bring down the structure a little bit. And the reason why I'm doing that is because as we modify our highlights and our shadows, sometimes things get a little, I don't know, crunchy is kind of a word I use for that. So if you bring down the structure, it can kind of help in those uh, micro contrast areas so that they don't have quite as much of that HDR kind of look going on with the technique that we did up there. And if I bring the haze up to about that plus 11 point, that's going to help my background a little bit and make the highlights just kind of pop a little bit in the center here. There's not a lot of information there and I don't want to do one of these numbers because then it just washes out my whole image and makes the whole thing flat. And I don't want to do that. I want I want some depth and some contrast between my foreground and my background. So now with the temperature adjustment, I'm just going to bring up the warmth a little bit in this image and bring it up to about the plus nine mark. And then I'm going to play with the temperature and the tint and bring the tint up because I like a little bit more pink coming through here. So maybe about the 20 mark. I don't really want it to be on the green side. I'd rather favor the, the, the magenta side on here a little bit. And then with the saturation, I'm not going to play too much with saturation because I don't like playing with saturation here. I like doing that on its own area. And I'm going to bring the vibrance up to about 15 just to make those colors pop a little bit. So now that I've got my tone set, I have this thing called tone, color, and effects. I do my tone first, then my color, and then I go into my effects. So now I'm going to go into the color palette here. And in the color adjustment, I'm going to look at each individual color. So from my reds to my oranges, yellows, greens, and so on and so forth. And really what I'm doing here when I adjust these colors is I'm just kind of seeing what color is being affected. One way to help here is to bring your saturation all the way up to see where those colors are being affected. And it looks like our reds are right around in these rock areas here. So I'm going to bring this hue down a little bit in my reds, maybe bring my brightness up a little bit in those reds, just a slight tad and then bring that saturation down to 28 because I never really bring the saturation all the way up. I just do that to see where my colors are. So now I'm going to go into my oranges and I'm going to make my oranges pop up. So now I know exactly where my oranges are. Now that I know where they are, I can go ahead and maybe modify the hue of those a little bit by making them a little bit more red and then maybe brighten them up a little bit and then come back in here to my saturation and pull that down so it's not so overpowering. The next thing I'm going to do is hop into my yellows. Again, bust that saturation all the way up to 100% so we can change our hue to see what color we want that yellow to be. And then we can bring that saturation down so it's not so uh, pungent. <laughs> Pungent's a good word for saturation. And then bring that uh, highlights or the brightness up a little bit in, in that yellow also. Now I'm going to come down to the greens. And in the greens, I'm going to bust that saturation all the way up. Here's a cool thing about range too. You can actually change the range here so it selects more of that color if you want to. I'm going to leave that at zero, but that's just a good uh, G whiz information for you there. If it's not selecting as much green as you'd like it to, come into the range here and just pop it up a little bit. That's an awesome setting that you won't find in many programs or plugins. I love the fact that they put that there. And then we'll go ahead and maybe make those on the more on the, the bluish side. So bring that up a little bit into our cyans and then the brightness up a little bit. Really what I'm doing here is I don't like to adjust my colors globally. I like to come in and adjust my saturation and my colors on their own level so that the whole image doesn't get a boost in saturation, but just the areas that I want get that boost in saturation. So now I'm going to come over to the cyans and see if there's anything in there for me. And there's really not a whole lot in the cyans, so I'm not going to worry about cyan. I'll just pop on over to blue bust the blue up to 100%. Yep, we see there's a lot of blue in there. So let's change that hue to the hue that we want it to be. I kind of want it to be more towards the cyan colors. So I'll drop that to about the negative five mark. That, that should be good. And then I'll look at the brightness of my blues. Looks like they they benefit a little bit by getting a little bit darker. So I'll bring that down quite a bit. And then I'll bust that saturation back down to about the 20 mark. So I bring the saturation all the way up just so I can see where that color is. So when I modify the hue and the brightness and the range, I know exactly what's being selected. There's really nothing in the magentas and the, and the purples for this image, so I'm not going to worry about those too much. But I do want you to pop back up to your tone and come down here to where it says purity in your highlights and your shadows. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the purity over a little bit because sometimes our highlights get a little bit too much. When it comes to the tone and the saturation in our images. So if we bring that highlights purity over a little bit, that'll start to help protect those highlights from getting um, overly um, affected by our contrast and our, and our color adjustments. And I'll do the same thing with my shadows a little bit just to protect some of those areas there. It's kind of like a protection measure, 
because it's it's allowing your highlights and your shadows to stay more pure to the color and the tones that they were when the image was first brought in. So now we'll look at our before and after. Here's our before and here's our after. It looks great right now and I could actually just stop here and call this good. But now I'm going to move into my effects phase. So I've done tone, I've done color. Now I'm going to pop in over to effects and add a couple cool little effects here for you to try out. So let's open up the effects, hop right on over to effects. We're going to add a filter and we're going to add this HDR look. Now recently I did a tutorial on protection measures and how uh, on one can be used to protect your images with apply to. And I'm going to show you how I use that specifically with this HDR technique. So I'm going to bring the compression up quite high. I'm going to bring it up to about 142, 150, just somewhere high. Just bring that compression up high. I'm going to bring my detail down to zero because I really don't want the details to be punching as quite as hard as they are. But I am also going to bring up the clarity quite a bit here, about 91. And that looks horrible. That looks horrible. It looks like a really bad HDR image, and I did that on purpose. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this little icon, this gear icon, click on that gear icon, and go to Apply To and select Midtones. So what I'm telling it is I'm saying, hey, I like what you're doing to just the midtone areas, but I don't want you to do this to my highlights or my shadows because when you do this to my highlights, this HDR thing, to my highlights when it's affected globally like this, I'm starting to get some halos. And when you're doing it to my shadows, I'm starting to get some noise in my shadows. So, hey, on one, please just apply this HDR look to my midtones. And then we can move the range over a little bit so that we can, the range is basically the selection of the midtones. You, you can see how the HDR look starts to affect those midtones as we move this over to the right. And I'm going to move that over to about 89 or so. Another thing we can do is if you come down here to the highlights, shadows, and skin, we can start to protect certain areas of those midtones. So now I'm saying, okay, apply it to the midtones, but now protect the highlight areas of those midtones. So I'm specifically saying HDR look, apply yourself to the midtones. All right, you're only on the midtones, good. Now I want you to protect yourself from the highlights in the image. So boom, we start to bring this over to protect those highlights. We can bring that up to about the 27 to 30 mark. That should be good. We're definitely going to protect those shadow areas because we don't want noise to come through. And we also like the contrast that's better when we bring that all the way over. And skin is kind of like the mid-tone section of landscape stuff. So uh, here it's labeled skin, but when we're working on a landscape, you'll see that it's kind of these mid-tone skin tones there. And we'll bring that up to about the 40 mark. Beyond that, though, I like what it's done but I really don't like what it's done to my sky. So I'm going to try and reduce the opacity a little bit here. Just bring that opacity down to about, you know, 69, 70 mark. If we bring it all the way down. It's not going to affect our image at all. So if we bring the opacity down, it's, it's, that's the master effect of the whole HDR look. So we're applying multiple ways of protecting our image. Number one, we're only applying it to the midtones. Number two, we're protecting the highlight areas of those midtones and the shadows in the midtone areas of those midtones. And now we're protecting the entire global effect. And we can go even further with that by adding a mask. So when I add this mask, I'm going to invert this mask. So this mask is black. When I invert the mask, nothing happens. We have no effect. And the reason why we have no effect is because I told it to black out the entire effect. Because now what I want to do is start bringing in some of that HDR look to areas that I specifically want it to apply to. So if I press Alt or Option, that will switch me over to the plus sign on my brush, which means it's going to brush in white. And we know that because when we look over here, it's starting to bring these areas back into the image. And really what this is doing here is it's just it's opening up a certain area to the viewer that they just get to see things with a little bit more heightened detail than the rest of the image. It's a great way to navigate the eye around the photograph by adding this slight HDR look to only very specific parts of our image. So now if we go ahead and press the O key, we can see exactly what we're adding to our image. I'll press that Alt button so that we get this whole thing right here in white. I could have used the perfect brush too to get really intricate, but with this it was just uh, just really just a slight painting area. I didn't want to get too intricate with the perfect brush. So now if I press I to invert this, you'll see that that HDR look is affecting our background now and not our rocks. I don't want it to affect the background. I only want it to affect our rocks and our foreground area. So it's, it's a very selective way to apply an HDR like look. I love the look of HDR for a long time. I was an HDR only photographer. I mean, really all I did was HDR stuff and I love HDR, but it has a very specific place in your workflow. 
And I found that over time, that instead of doing all of my images in this really garish HDR look, I started to apply that effect only to certain areas that I wanted to navigate the viewer's eye to. It's a very powerful way to use the HDR look. So now I'm going to add a split tone effect. So I'm going to go into the add filter and go to split tone. And I really like split tone. Split tones are very powerful and effective for getting a color grade or a color cast over your images. You'll see this a lot in movies where movies have this certain color to it. Like, man, that color makes me feel a certain way. Well, that's what split tone can be used for. But another thing split tone can be used for is adding a wash of color over a certain area. I'm going to show you another way that I use apply to. So to begin with this, if we bring the amount up to 100 and bring this amount up to 100, you start to see that this is where the highlights are being affected by this brownish color. And this is where my shadows are being affected by this blue color. Well, really, the only thing I want here is when I look at this, I want my the, the blue color haze that's kind of happening back here to be pushed back a little bit. And there's ways that you can work with complementary colors to do that. So the complement of this color blue would be kind of like this yellowish tinge and you can use any color you want for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop this amount from my shadows down to zero. So I'm basically saying split tone. I only really want you to affect my highlights at this point. So I'm going to select this color and I'm going to go into, let's say this color right here, just a, just a yellowish kind of cream color like this that should work and press OK. And I'm also going to go in here and I'm going to change the blend mode to color. And the reason why I changed that blend mode to color is because the color blend mode is really powerful. If you're ever using something with color and you want to apply it to your image, what the color blend mode will do is it will protect the, the luminance values that are underneath the image and only apply the color over the image while protecting the luminance values underneath. So it's a really powerful blending mode to use when you're working with color because of the way it protects your tones underneath. So with this, it doesn't look good right now. And I know it doesn't look good right now. So we need to say, okay, what is it that we want to apply this to in the first place? Well, I wanted to apply it to the highlights. Remember, I only want that color cast and the highlights to be affected back there. And I'm going to affect the range here. I'm just going to bring that range up so that it selects a big bulk of my sky. Notice how when I'm working with color, I always go to a hyper extension of that color. So for this instance, the hyper extension of this color is a very high amount just like you saw when I was working with the color pane in, in the um, develop module. So then we come down here and just start to protect some of those areas down there. I might bring the highlights up just a little bit and then bring the shadows. Let's see what happens. Really, we're working with the highlights now. So I'm working in the highlights and protecting some of those highlight areas from not getting hit so hard. And that should work about right there. And then I'll come up to the opacity and drop the opacity down. And one of the big questions I get about this is like, why do you work so finically with where things are being applied to? And you would think, well, it doesn't make that big of a difference, but it does. It's the small details. It's the very little details that are going to set your images apart. But now the beauty of this is that we've got this set to this yellowish color. At any time, if I want to bring the hue around, I can start changing the hue of that color so that I can start to make this scene look a little different. Maybe I wanted the, uh, the sunset to be a little bit more powerful. Well, if I wanted the sunset to be a little bit more powerful, because it definitely wasn't the night that we were there, I can start to add some of this magenta color to it. But I can only do that because of the ways that I've protected my image from the apply to settings. So now I'm changing the whole look and the whole feel of this image just by doing this. OK, so if you're having trouble following along with this, it's very difficult at first. But you have to think to yourself, what do I want to affect? Well, in this, I knew specifically that I wanted that color cast that was the blue color cast of my highlights to be gone. So how do you fix that? Well, you fix it with the complementary color of the color blue, which is the color yellow. So you need to know something about color theory here. And color theory is a very powerful thing to know as a photographer. The next thing is, OK, we only want to apply to our highlights. We applied that yellow color to our highlights. Now let's drop that opacity so it's not so powerful. If we have this all the way up to 100, it's not going to look good. We bring that down, and it, this is an effect. This is an effect look. It, it doesn't look that good uh, as a natural image, but it might look OK as an effect. But if we bring this down, the opacity down to about 10 to 15 percent, we go from an effect to something that gives us a natural color tone. Okay, and that's why we do these things. And, and I will show you at the end of this that all of this does matter. Okay, everything matters here. So the next thing I'm going to do is add a sunshine effect. So I'm going to go in and just hit sunshine. And I love what sunshine does to my image. It just makes everything just pop. Um, it's one of those things that I get really excited about because I'm like, oh, wow, look at that. Look what sunshine just did to my image. Everyone needs a little sunshine in their photographs. 
So I'm going to go ahead and bring this amount um, up just a little bit to about the 56, 57 range. Anywhere is good around there. If you're looking at the notes, uh, you'll see that I brought that up to about 55. The saturation or the warmth here will bring that up to about 30 just to boost that warmth a little bit. And the saturation will bust that up just a little bit, just about the four round range. So again, I look at this and I say, well, I really don't like the way it applies itself to my entire image. How can I fix that? Well, if I bring this gear icon down again, I can say, well, let's only apply this to our shadows, not our midtones, not our highlights, just our shadows. And then we can bring that range up. And I'll bring that range up to a healthy range, about you know 58 to 60. That should work. And look at it that way. Here's before, here's the after. And that range, if I bring that range down to zero, it's not going to affect it at all. As I slowly bring it up, it'll only affect certain areas of my shadows. If I start to bring it up to a higher range, it starts to bleed a little bit into those mid-tone areas. And that's okay. It gives us a nice natural progression from one area of the image to the next. And that's, that's good. So I apply this only to my shadows. The next thing I'm going to do is just close this down. I'm going to add a vignette. The last and final thing is to add a vignette here. And with this vignette, I'm going to go to the big softy. I like the big softy. Love the big softy. Uh, and with that big softy, I can pretty much leave all of these settings down here the same because I like the way they look, the way it comes across. But I also do believe that it's a little too powerful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the icon, the gear icon. And from the gear icon, I'm going to look at my protection measures. I really don't want this to protect my shadows because then it looks a little funky. It looks like a bad HDR look. Don't really want it to protect it from my skin tones because then I really lose pretty much the whole vignette. But I am going to protect it from my highlights so that these highlight areas up here, these big, bold highlight areas, get to stay big and bold. If I leave it this way, it looks like it's kind of compressing the tones a little bit up there. And it almost looks like someone threw a spotlight on my image. So I'm going to bring the highlights all the way up to protect those highlights from that vignette. I'm also going to do another trick here and go into my blending options and change this to luminosity. And the reason why I changed this to luminosity is because you'll notice when this is set to normal, we get a color cast around our image with that vignette. And I don't want a color cast with it. I did so much work for my colors that I want to protect those areas. So if I change that blending mode to luminosity, it's only going to apply the, the darkness to my image without bringing the color cast with it. And then the last thing I can do is come up here and drop that opacity down to about 50% because it's a little powerful. So now in On One Photo Raw with NFX, we can click these little buttons on and off. Look at the difference here. If I don't have the HDR look, does it make a difference? Yeah, I'd say it does. If I don't do the split tone, does it make a difference? Yeah, it does. It's very slight, but it's that makes all the difference. Let's turn sunshine off. Look at how grungy it looks. Look at what this sunshine filter did for our image. It allowed us to uh, make our colors pop a little bit more, make it look a little bit more natural, more like the scene that it was when we were there. And then if I look at the vignette, Turn that vignette off. The vignette helps us navigate our attention right into the image. So you do need all of these little steps because they help. And did we even have to go through this effects portion? Not necessarily. This is a great color and toned image. And we could have stopped there in the develop module. But when we bring it to that next level, that effects level, it looks great. So the first thing we want to do is fix up those dust blemishes. Then we hop into tone and we affect our tone to get the image kind of laid out like we want it to. I do kind of like this HDR look so I can close down some of those, some of that data in the image. And then we bust over into our color and we modify each one of those individual colors on their own so that we can actually narrow down which colors get the effect and the boosted saturation. Because not all colors need a boost in saturation. You can't just use that master saturation control because it doesn't, doesn't always help. We could have finished it there, but we went over to effects. And in effects, we added that HDR look, that split tone, that sunshine, and that vignette. And the big things to take away there are when you're working on these effects. Like when we look at this HDR look, we don't want this to apply to everything. Because if it does apply to everything, then we kind of lose some of the charm in the image because we lose it to this grungy effect. So in here, we did a lot for our protection measures. We used apply to, we used some protection measures, and we also used a mask and the reduced opacity. Going into the split tone, when you want to offset a color, think about that color's complement and use that complement to, to offset that color. I used the split tone here kind of like a single color overlay. So I reduced all of that shadow color and only allowed some highlight color to come through. And from there, again, you can change the whole look and feel of this image by modifying the hue of that color that's coming through there. It looks really great even over in this magenta area. I kind of like that. I'm going to keep that there.
Then we applied Sunshine for that little boost, only applied it to our shadows and maybe transitioned that a little bit over into our midtones, and then we added a vignette. So again, my name is Blake Rudis. I've given you a no frills notes with the download so you can follow right along with me. And I've also given you a no fluff tutorial. This is usually you have like this 90-10 rule where 90% is fluff and 10% is content. Yeah, we kind of flipped that on you here. This is 10% fluff and 90% content. So I really hope you enjoyed this and I hope you learned quite a bit about the new on one photo raw in the process.